Everybody, thanks for joining us on today's video of probably one of the most iconic muscle cars ever, the Olds 442 or 442, depending on who you want to fight in the parking lot right now, because, you know, everybody has their opinion on how to say that. I love so much, uh, too, about what the numbers stand for, what they stood for uh, in the earlier 60s when the first generation of these cars came out, then the second generation in 68 when these came out. When you talk about a 69 muscle car, I mean, that's really, we're right at the pinnacle of the coolest of the cool 6970s. In this case here, what we have is a beautifully preserved and restored piece of history, all right, with an added package to it. Now, the cool thing about this is, as these cars continue to go up in value and up in value, this real deal, matching numbers, uh, 442, right, uh, has a W30 package that was added by the, the person who restored it for us, okay? The good news is this is a decal. And the uh, fender liners would just be replaced with black ones, right? And the air cleaner we could put uh, back to its correct uh, place as well. Or it looks really nice on there. If you, if you like the look of the red fender liners and didn't want that advertised, again, that's a decal. It comes off. It's so cool. It's a nice package setup. When this was rebuilt, uh, the engine, they added the more power that the, that the W30 would have given us. And so it's the best of both worlds. We have matching numbers, right? We have a real deal car. This is the way it rolled off the showroom floor, according to the fender tag, uh, the cow tag inside, right? The white with the red interior is stunning. The red lines that are on the car are fabulous. And then we have a bunch of options as well. We're gonna walk around and look at that. The paint is super, super nice. Uh, even under these fluorescent lights, it's, uh, I don't wanna say flawless, but it's nearly flawless. And uh, I think you'll be very excited to see it. So let's check some quality of some paint. And we'll talk a little more about the Cameo Ivory and what it'll look like in your garage. All right, so let's talk about paint for a second. First off, you can see how beautiful and shiny this paint is. But what most people don't know is that you and I could paint, and I've never really painted a car. The, the, the great bodywork and paint is tied up in the prep of the car. Here's how you'll know that, for instance. If you've ever repaired a hole in the wall, whether it's a nail or something like that, and you rushed it a little bit, needed to get it done, then you went to paint it and you could see what was behind there, your painting was fine. It was the prep that went into it. This case here, somebody's put a lot of time into the prep of this car, and it started out as a really nice car as well. So let's look at the quality of the paint here in the reflection. Make sure you can read all those letters nice and clear, not just see the reflection, because the, the more clear the letters are, uh, the, the, the shinier the paint is. All right, so let's take a peek under here and look at the detail. You know, this is, some of these things here, you're going to say, well, Tone, uh, who cares? And I agree, who cares? I care. But I'll tell you why it matters. It doesn't matter because of the slight increase in cost. It matters in the effort and, and what it took to get to that place. For instance, GM hoses. You know, maybe three times the price of a regular hose, not a big deal, right? You say, well, exactly, why are you even bringing it up? Well, because if you're going to restore a car and you're going to do all of these little things, you're going to end up with a much nicer car. That means the things that you can't see have been done. So, for instance, like this battery topper looks very nice. Correct cables. These are the original style of battery clamps. Tower clamps. Tower clamps, you say, well, Tony, it's just a, a clamp. Who cares? You're right. Who cares? But this clamp may be five or six times the price of a regular clamp, but the point is that all of the detail stuff is done. For instance, the wiper motor, all restored and rebuilt. The uh, the panels are painted properly. This is probably over restored. Now you say, well, well, why is that a bad thing? Well, you're absolutely right. It's not a bad thing because this car is much nicer than when it left the factory. Remember, they were building uh, hundreds of thousands of these cars uh, in '69. And the fact of the matter is somebody was restoring one and did a beautiful, beautiful job under here, especially when you think about things you can't see, for instance, like power steering, right? And power disc brakes up front. A lot of these old muscle cars didn't have any of that stuff. And stepping on uh, non-power drum brakes is like stepping on wood. There's not a lot there. If you do stop it the first time and you need to stop it again pretty quickly, there's not a lot left. This solves all of those problems. Uh, the detail under here is really great. And again, this is a W30 upgrade where it has fresh air induction in these scoops underneath the bumpers right here that we uh, hopefully you got to see. That can be removed if you don't want it there. And this will make this car as stock as possible. I think it looks great. That's why I didn't take it off. But that's your call. It's going to be your car and you'll enjoy it however you want to. All right. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the back end of this car. The 69 is nice and tight looking back here. Uh, the trumpet tips are, are olds all the way. Under here is a 12 volt, all right, which is different. A lot of times people say, well, the 12 volt didn't come in a 442. You know, I don't know how to argue that with you or not, but the truth is they did come in there. But they're not the same 12 volt that you would find in a Chevelle. Uh, so there is that difference there. So 
Uh, it's different. It's not 12 volts in the sense that it's uh, the same as what you would find in a Chevrolet's, but it is a 12 volt cover on there. All right. The detail part of it is all new chrome and stainless and the tips and the exhaust. And uh, I'm hoping that the reflection that uh, Andy will be able to get for you under here so you can see how beautiful the car is in the floor. All right, let's talk about the detail in here. This is what I wanted you to see. Like it's waxed inside the trunk lid, all new weather stripping, a new mat. The, the splatter paint is the correct color inside the trunk here. You say, well, Tom, what does it matter about splatter paint? What's, how much is a can of that? You're absolutely right. But this case here, it's done properly in the sense that not only was it splatter painted, then it was cleared over top of so it doesn't rust in, inside here. And I don't mean rust from salt and things like that. I mean rust from like you put your cooler in here or something and water runs down inside here, gets trapped under the mat and ends up making a, a rust mark. And it doesn't rust all the way through. It just keeps it from getting ugly. It has a spare tire and jack that's all painted in detail. You say, well, well, every car has a spare tire and jack, doesn't it? No. Almost no cars have a spare tire and jack. And the fact of the matter is this is in here and we got it that way. And that's why I keep pointing out the tower clamps and the spare tire and the chrome and the detail. Because to do a car like this costs way more than you have to pay for this today. That's why uh, everybody who buys one of these uses a stated value policy in their insurance. And if you call us, we'll tell you exactly what that means. Help protect you in case of an accident. All right, so come join me in here, uh, but I want you to hear this first. I love that, man. This is a convertible. Convertibles tend to not sound so solid when you open and close the doors over time. This is a beautifully restored car. I'm spending the time to show you these things, not because I'm trying to show off, but I'm showing you the effort that somebody else put into this car since I didn't restore it, right? Um, for instance, like the footwell lighting is working. Well, Tom, what's the big deal about footwell? Well, two or three years into owning the car, the footwell lighting wasn't working. Somebody spent the time to make sure all that worked. Check out the console light here. This is working as well, right? Beautifully restored dash, all new upholstery in here from seats to seat foams to the chrome trim that goes around there, new door panels, handles, window cranks, uh, uh, every piece, vent pull knobs. The radio is restored. It's the original AM, FM radio too, not just an AM radio. This has the tick-tock tack in it, so it has the factory clock in there, as well as the tachometer. Every gauge you could imagine, from temp to fuel, of course, but oil pressure. And all of this stuff is here. I get excited about it because I know what it takes to restore a car. And when you can get in a car like this and go for a drive this weekend, like you could theoretically get in here and go now instead of waiting two years uh, to restore a car. And this is the way to do it. All right, so we closed up this video and we talked about... I spent a lot of time talking about the quality of the car, and I, I do that only because I see these cars all the time, man, and they might be shiny out front, but they don't finish them. Everything on this car, somebody has put a lot of effort into, maybe over-restored, but I don't care. I'd rather have an over-restored car than an under-restored car, right? Because you're going to want to enjoy this for a while, and from the beautiful white to the red interior to the power disc brakes and the power steering and the detailed trunk and the beautiful detailed undercarriage of the car, we have a spectacular piece of history that's not only a beautiful restoration, it's matching numbers too, and that is what I consider a collector car, meaning a future classic that's going to hopefully continue to go up in value year after year, and you get to drive it too, man. You can't do that with your stocks. That's why these are such a, a, a so much fun, and that's why so many people do it, all right? Anyway, so as we close up the video, make sure, uh, if you don't mind, to share uh, with your friends, and uh, if you could like the video as well, we got a test drive video too. You can jump in there virtually, go for a drive, and uh, if you got some comments about maybe you rode in one or maybe you owned one in the past, I'd love to hear about that as well. Anyway, call us, 301-816-1000. We'll tell you all about the 69 Olds 442 convertible.